Welcome back and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Now this week, the parliament passed the national budget that is worth 48.1 trillion shillings. Now many interested parties are looking to the budget which comes into force in July with a lot of expectations. One of these parties is the business community. Now tonight, we would like to know from the Private Sector Foundation Uganda Chief Membership Officer, that is Mr. Kisidinya Francis, if the budget actually meets their expectations. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening, Mildred, and mm. good evening, our listeners and yes, viewers out, out there. Okay, yes. thank you. So let us start from the beginning. Does the budget meet your expectations? Um, thanks, Mildred. Um, for us as Private Sector Foundation, our um, requirements from this year's budget was to see that government comes up with the proposals that address the challenges that we're facing from COVID, the slowdown in the economy, the reduction in, the, in the, uh, aggregate demand. But along the way, uh, Ukraine and Russia came up and now prices uh, increased. So we are also looking at uh, how uh, the budget can propose reduction in the effects of the Ukraine war, most especially in terms of increasing the prices. So I'll say from, from our perspective, uh, so far from what we have so far seen, but we'll be seeing the, the details when the minister reads the budget uh, in, in the parliament on the 14th. Uh, what we see is really a mixed bag. We cannot at the moment say it's this good or that uh, bad mm. uh, for the moment. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, okay, I wanted to also know, do you think uh, the business community should be hopeful that this will stimulate growth? Um, yes, uh, from the perspective of, uh, if you see the direction that uh, this budget is, is taking, even from the perspective of the theme, which is industrialization for uh, economic growth, you can see an attempt by government to focus in that area. And uh, we have seen proposals in the budget that have come through that are uh, focusing towards that. For instance, we hoped very much that uh, we should do expand the consumption, we should expand uh, aggregate demand. Okay. Now, we have seen from uh, uh, the proposals, for instance, the investments that are going to be made in the parishes, 100 million shillings per parish, as something that will help boost uh, aggregate demand because uh, people will have an income and then they will spend. Secondly, we have seen also uh, moves towards reduction in some of the taxes. Uh, for instance, we have seen reduction in, in, in the taxes on uh, alcohol. Mm. Uh, we've seen reduction in taxes of uh, opaque beers. And we have also seen redux reduction in taxes on uh, spirits uh, made in Uganda. Why this is important is this, Mildred. Opaque beers are beers that are made from locally sourced raw materials here, like cassava, maize, and the rest. Now, these are grown, uh, the, the raw material, the maize, the cassava, the sorghum, is grown by the local people. Now, when you give them an opportunity uh, to increase value addition, to convert these into uh, industrial products, it means you are giving them a market, and that market will boost the income. We have also seen uh, increase, sorry, reduction in the taxes on hotels. Now, hotels are one of the sectors that was significantly hit by COVID, and we needed it uh, to Revamped. come back, revamped, uh, boosted quickly. So the reduction and the removal of the taxes on VAT on hotel rooms is something that we applaud. Uh, first of all, it will increase, it will reduce the cost of the hotel, of the hotel rooms, but it will make us a little bit fairer Competitive, a little bit competitive with the, some of our neighbors. So we see that this will encourage um, the um, tourism, and this will increase uh, on the uh, on the incomes because mm -hmm. they are going to we are going to have workers. We are going to have this so that they can they can we can increase our our incomes. Um, okay. Though we missed something that we didn't see from the perspective of uh, of increasing incomes. We had hoped as private sector foundation that. Um, Beside all of that that has been done, we ought to have seen a little bit of uh, reliefs for the workers uh, in Uganda, people who work in the factories, who work on the farms, who work uh, in government. We had hoped that uh, government would look at how to reduce 
the minimum threshold on pay as you earn. So that if people who earn up to about 400,000 shillings per month don't pay tax, then the, the savings they will make can help boost uh, the demand. But sadly, we've not seen this, and uh, I think it is one of the things that we've uh, we've actually missed in this uh, in this budget. Okay. Yes. Mm. So uh, uh, you've been talking about the you know reduction in taxes and all of that, mm -hmm. and we saw members of parliament shutting down the call on reducing taxes on fuel. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? What is your take on this? I think for us uh, as private sector, we've uh, we appreciate that any time you increase prices on fuel, uh, I mean taxes on fuel, the, and, uh, the, price is going, the pump price is going to increase. And when the pump price increases, then you are going to have increases in the rest of the things. Where we are, it is a bit abnormal, ladies and gentlemen. The increases have gone up so much over the last few months. And you can already see that, for instance, the fuel we use for commerce, diesel, has even gone beyond uh, petrol. So meaning that m uh, I increases in prices that are driven by fuel are significant. There needs to be some intervention. We know that we don't have fuel here. It comes from abroad. Yes, that is understood. So some intervention is necessary. And therefore, members of the par of parliament who had hoped, uh, who had made the proposal to reduce taxes on fuel, I think they were what they were doing was right. Yeah. Uh, only that it was not possible for the entire uh, parliament to agree with them because of considerations of reduction in the revenue that the government will generate. Yeah. Um, having said that, I think uh, there could be other things that we could do okay. to ensure that uh, this kind of uh, challenge, we don't face it that, that much. So what are we, we, we proposed to government that, okay, um, besides, because we had also hoped that they can remove on the taxes on fuel. The recommendations, you, that the recommendations you're talking about, are these some of the demands you had put out to the government? Yes, to, to government. To now, the, if mm. we had put those, reduced some taxes, ours was even a simple thing. Uh, we are talking about reducing just 100 shillings per liter, the 100 shillings that was introduced in the current budget. Uh, but that was not possible. But now, if you analyze and see that the some of the contribution to the increases was based on shortages. We thought that uh, having fuel reserves yes. could actually be one of those things that could be, could be done. And we are saying that this fuel reserve need, need not be um, uh, invested in by government only. We can ha come up with some policy structure and incentives that can allow also the private sector to invest in, those, in these reserves. Mm. So that those shocks that come from abroad, we can uh, buffer them, we can handle them um, because of, uh, by utilizing mm. reserves. Okay. So that could contribute to this uh, uh, reduction in, in significant cha changes in the prices okay. that like, we have seen. All right, so you as a private sector foundation, you made demands for the finance, uh, to the finance ministry to consider and you've broken down some of those. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask what should, uh, what would you have wanted to be included in the budget this time around as the private <coughs> sector foundation, Uganda? Yes, certainly uh, from the perspective of increases in prices, we have uh, we had already mentioned to government that is, it is important for us to intervene and to try to see that prices reduce. Like for instance, what we have seen significantly in, in the area of uh, uh, um, edible oils and soap, we had proposed that government should reduce, should remove the import duty on crude palm oil. Uh, if that is re reduced, the manufacturers thought that this can contribute to the reduction in the prices. It cannot uh, take away the whole increase, but right. at least it is a, a contribution uh, to the reduction. We also uh, had proposed that uh, we expand um, our capacity, internal capacity to to, to, to actually have those products that we, we manufacture from foreign um, raw materials to be uh, done here. For instance, sun boosting sunflower production, boosting palm oil production here mm. can be able to substitute what we've been Do importing. Okay. The same thing with the steel products. Now, uh, steel products have also gone up quite significantly, but we are able to, we have iron ore 
in the, in the Kabale, in the Tororo and the, all those areas. So if, if we are able uh, to make uh, interventions that can be able to help us exploit those ones, I think that can be also uh, very helpful in terms of uh, managing the price the price increases. Okay. Mm. So uh, tomorrow we expect the president actually to address the nation on the current economic situation. Mm. Uh, what are some of the issues you want him to look into as the private sector? Now uh, they, we are so happy that the president is coming up to to, to address us on the issues of uh, of increasing prices. And you know the president has that coming kind of personality yes. and effect on the people. We saw the impact he actually uh, created As we conclude. during uh, COVID. Now, we would like to the, the, His Excellency to take that compassionate approach and uh, let people know that we are really suffering as a country from these uh, uh, challenges of imported inflation and stuff like that. And then advise the, the country to see how best we can, we can actually overcome this challenge. To use what we have to save and to spend when we should actually spend. Okay. Also, we would like the, His Excellency, if you look at the budget that was read, uh, you can see that uh, about, it is 48 trillion, uh, 25 trillion is going to be funded by domestic resources. But there is a 19 trillion which is going to be funded by borrowing. And the 12 trillion of the borrowing will be uh, got from the local market here. Okay. We are worried a bit as the private sector that if government borrows 12 trillion from the local market in one financial year, that will crowd out the private sector. The banks won't be attracted in lending to the private sector because there is a big borrower and risk-free borrower who is government. Okay, and finally, in your last remarks, mm -hmm. if you if you to advise the business community on how to on how to face the uh, future, what would you tell them? I think for the business community, very clearly what we have uh, advised and what we are advising you today is look at your costing structure and make sure that you are able to continue trading uh, profitably because it is from that uh, margin that will be able to pay your costs, pay your workers, pay your loans and all of that stuff. Be able, look at it very well and don't increase because everybody is increasing. No. It's only if you are unable, and we're very happy with the companies that have said, despite all the problems we have, we're not going to increase the prices. But as a business community, please look at that. Then second, look at your expenditure. Do you have to spend on everything that comes your way? Are there things that you can postpone so that they can be done on a good day? Thirdly, where are the, invest are the, you, the number of investment opportunities that are available? Can you take advantage of them? Mm. Investment opportunities in agriculture and agribusiness, opportunities in tourism, opportunities in oil and gas. Let us have them. And we also ask the requested government that these investment opportunities, especially the oil and gas ones, are capital intensive. We need a fund. Thank you so much. There you have it, Mr. Kisirinya Francis, getting to share his comments on the recently passed 48.1 trillion budget by the parliament. Thank you so much for joining us for Take of the Nation. We take a break and return with NTV Weekend Edition.